Today we're talking about how AI is actually reducing burnout at work. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a really encouraging report, something that people have been talking about for a long time is the idea that AI, if done well, should be taking tasks off the plate of humans that are rote, monotonous, difficult, basically the stuff that's really important that has to get done, but that's a total pain to get done. And in so doing, if that actually happens, theoretically work should be a better, more enjoyable experience, right? According to a new survey from HR management platform UKG, that might just be the case. In a sample of 8,200 frontline workers, the percentage of workers who were not using AI who reported burnout was 54%. Among those who were using AI at work, that number dropped to 41%. That means that the burnout rate among those using AI was a full 24% lower than those who weren't using AI. Now, interestingly, in the same study, while about a third of frontline workers reported using AI at work, fears of AI replacement were more widespread than actual use. Two-thirds said they were concerned that AI might replace their job, a quarter said that part of their job had probably already been replaced by AI, and over the next five years, 20% said it was likely that their job would be entirely replaced by AI. At the same time, the survey also found a widespread fear that failing to adopt AI would cause workers to fall behind. 65% of respondents said that they were worried that colleagues more skilled in using AI could take their job. So this is a super interesting report. It is not by an outright AI company. It's got a lot of folks in the sample, and it's very clearly telling a complex story. There is a lot of fear and concern around AI. There's definitely an indication that people are behind in understanding how to use it, but it's got that really positive glimmer for those who are using it. Said Corey Spencer, vice president of AI at UKG, the irony, if done the right way, is that AI can empower people to do what they were meant to do. The global study shows that work needs to be done to better educate, train, and explain the why behind AI uses on the front line. It's about AI and frontline employees working together to move from menial to meaningful work. When AI is deployed with a people-first focus, it doesn't feel like you're using technology. It feels like you're solving problems. That, I think, is interesting context for our next story, which is that Google has introduced a new AI for the Workplace product in Gemini Enterprise. On Thursday, Google launched a new product, which represents a fresh start for the way they deliver AI services to corporate clients. Over the past year, Google has, of course, embedded AI tools into Google Workspace, offering numerous services attached to Google Cloud, but generally dealing with the fact that AI was sort of all over their product sprawl rather than in a clear, concentrated bucket. Gemini Enterprise aims to consolidate the disparate products in one place, with CEO Sundar Pichai branding it as the new front door for Google AI in your workplace. Rather than being an add-on for Google Workspace, the product is designed to be an all-in-one AI bundle. On top of the familiar Gemini Assistant, it features a pre-built suite of agents as well as a no-code agent builder. Google has also improved agent connectivity across ecosystems and tools for this rollout. For the first time, Google's agents will be able to tap into tools like Code Assist and Deep Research, and they're also promoting improvements to their agents' ability to access corporate data both within Google Workspace and across common platforms including Microsoft 365, Salesforce, and SAP. The product also includes a central governance framework to enable agent monitoring, security, and auditing. Google wrote, by bringing all of these components together through a single interface, Gemini Enterprise transforms how teams work. It moves beyond simple tasks to automate entire workflows and drive smarter business outcomes. This is part of a style of announcement that's happening a lot right now, where the development is not just about a new, more powerful underlying model, but a broader product context that makes it easier to use and actually be functional in real-world deployment. Pichai showcased a powerful but simple example where the user prompted Gemini to, quote, build me an agent that helps me prepare for meetings with customers by analyzing relevant docs, emails, and past meetings. Gemini then created a workflow that taps into those sources across Google Calendar, Gmail, and Google Drive. A very simple use case, but a nudge towards a natural language prompted agent builder that feels much more accessible than some of the other UI patterns that we've seen recently. In another demo, the platform was used to create a Halloween marketing campaign. The agent performed research, identified key trends, and checked inventory. It was able to identify a product shortage and rectify it by tapping into ServiceNow. Afterward, the agent drafted emails to store managers about the incoming order, and then finally created materials for social media using Google's image and video generation tools. Generalized interoperability is a huge part of the idea. Box CEO Aaron Levy tweeted, Another great win for AI agent interoperability. Box is partnering with Google to make Box AI agents accessible via Google Gemini Enterprise, so you can easily work with your enterprise content from anywhere. This is what the future of AI looks like. Now, Google shared some adoption statistics alongside the announcement, and based on those, enterprises are ready to take the next step. 
65% of Google Cloud customers are now using AI products, and among the AI industry, adoption is even higher. Google boasted that 9 of the top 10 AI labs and almost every AI unicorn is using Google Cloud. Next up, a little bit of fundraising news. Turns out that OpenAI's new agent kit has very much not killed N8N, as that startup has closed a Series C funding round that sees their valuation jump to $2.5 billion. They last raised money in March at a $350 million valuation, achieving a 7x in 7 months. The round was led by Excel and also includes NVIDIA's venture investment arm. Among other things, the deal speaks to the red-hot demand for top-tier AI startups. Previous reporting as the deal was coming together in August spoke of a bidding war leading to the round. It's also validation that agent-building platforms are set to be a major pillar of the AI ecosystem. Sources said that N8N financials showed that they had reached $40 million in ARR and achieved 10x user growth over the past year. Speaking directly to the OpenAI competition, N8N CEO Jan Oberhauser commented, If OpenAI is releasing something, you're going to be locked into the OpenAI model. What makes us special is that you don't have this lock-in. One more big fundraising news. Reflection AI has raised a whopping $2 billion to build a U.S.-based open-source frontier model. The startup was founded in March of last year by a pair of Google DeepMind leaders, Misha Laskin, who led reward modeling for Gemini, and Ioannis Antonoglu, who co-created AlphaGo. They've since recruited around 60 leading researchers and engineers across various specializations. Earlier this year, they released a large-scale reinforcement learning platform capable of training frontier models built on state-of-the-art mixture of experts architecture. They said that this was, quote, something once thought possible only inside the world's top labs. Having applied this method of reinforcement learning to build highly performant coding agents, they want to bring their methods to general agentic reasoning. This new round, which values the company at $8 billion, allowed Reflection to secure a training cluster and begin training a frontier model of their own. Now, a huge part of the pitch is the need for a competitive open-source frontier model built in the U.S. Co-founder Laskin said, DeepSeek and Quen and all these models are our wake-up call because if we don't do anything about it, then effectively the global standard of intelligence will be built by someone else. It won't be built by America. So you either choose to live at a competitive disadvantage or rise to the occasion. White House AI czar David Sachs pointed out that this is a national priority for the government, retweeting the announcement and adding, It's great to see more American open-source AI models. A meaningful segment of the global market will prefer the cost, customizability, and control that open source offers. We want the U.S. to win this category, too. I'm reminded of a Nicki Minaj lyric, 50K for a verse, no album out. Or in this case, as Swix put it, 2 billion raised with no product. The team is beyond cracked. That's going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.